Hi, welcome to a chef called Rhonda. I'm Rhonda and this is my kitchen. I'm going to show you how to make the classic zepla. Zepla are baked rings made with a shoe pastry and filled with flavored pastaria crema or pastry cream and garnished with powdered sugar and maraschino cherries. And traditionally the Italians feast on Zeplis on March 19th, which is also known as San Giuseppe or St. Joseph's Day. Grab your trusty wooden spoon. We'll all meet back in the kitchen while I show you step by step this traditional, elegant Italian dessert, the Zepla. Hi to all my subscribers and happy St. Joseph's Day. Uh, today's recipe will begin by making the Italian custard, my grandmother's recipe, also known as pastry cream. I have two cups of whole milk, a half cup of white granulated sugar, three egg yolks, four tablespoons of cornstarch, and the peel of one large orange. A teaspoon and a half of vanilla. Here we go. I'm using a heavy stock pot over medium heat. I will first peel the orange and discard the little nub there and I will place the peel inside the stock pot and then I will pour the two cups of whole milk right over the top. It's important to note here uh, the heat is medium low and we do not want to boil the milk. We just want to bring the ingredients up to a steam. I've added about a teaspoon and a half of vanilla. I covered my pot. I'm going to go in and check in on it. I see that I noticed the steam here and I know that this is the proper timing to remove the stock pot from the heat after I've given it a good stir. Next I will take my Pyrex glass bowl. I will then add my three egg yolks to the bowl one at a time and they are large and at room temperature. I will whisk the yolks together and then I will add our sugar. Once my sugar and egg yolks are incorporated, I will then add four tablespoons of a good quality cornstarch. I will mix that until the ingredients are incorporated and turn a pale yellow. Now my milk has come down to a cool. I will remove the orange peel from the stock pot I have a chilled tablespoon I will go around the milk with just to further cool it. And I will add a quarter cup of that milk to our egg yolk mixture. After doing that, I will whisk vigorously for about a minute that quarter cup of milk. And once I have done that, I'm going to add the remains of the milk, whisk for two more minutes, and bring that mixture up to a froth. Keep watching as that frothy mixture appears. There we are. Back into the stock pot. This mixture goes over medium low heat. Watching for little bubbles to appear all while whisking. I will then take my whisk and I will continually whisk for another two minutes until my custard begins to form. Be mindful my heat is lowered. And you can see the custard taking shape. And I'm going back in with my trusty wooden spoon to be certain that the custard holds on the back edge of that spoon. Now I will transfer the custard to a stainless steel bowl and cover and chill for a minimum of four hours. The recipe will be scrolling as well as in the description box. If you're like me, you can allow the custard to sit in the refrigerator 24 hours before going on to the second step, how to make our zeple shells or our shoe pastry. My oven is preheated at 400 degrees. I've brought down all my ingredients to room temperature. Now the ingredients for the shoe pastry 
one cup water, one cup of bread flour, one stick of unsalted butter cut into eight pieces, four lodge eggs, and a pinch of salt. I have my stock pot over medium heat. I'll add my water, my butter, and my salt to the stock pot and whisk until my butter has dissolved. As soon as it starts to boil, turn off the heat and add all the flour at one time. Work quickly here to stir over the hot element until it comes together. Turn the stove down to low and stir for two minutes. Get underneath the dough with that trusty wooden spoon. That's important to note here. Get underneath the dough and turn it into a ball. Once the shoe pastry dough has formed, we will transfer it into a large Pyrex mixing bowl. Perfect, just like so. Now I'm taking an electric mixer to the dough and I will mix on low speed. Important to note they are low speed for about a minute to two minutes. This removes the steam from the pastry. I'm going to add our eggs one at a time and they are room temperature eggs, large eggs, four of them, and I'm going to mix on low speed, like so. Once my eggs are incorporated, you will notice the pastry dough forming, and you can see the transformation there but you need to continuously mix. Using a silicone spatula, I will be certain that the dough is prepared for our pastry bag. I will then fill our pastry bag for the piping of our Zapla shells. I filled my piping bag with the shoe pastry dough and I'm going to directly pipe little bird's nests in all varying sizes right onto my Silpat baking pan. Now, this recipe will yield about 24 small to medium, medium to large Zaplas. I'm going to give you a little tip here. My next baking pan, I'm going to line with parchment paper, but I'm going to add a dollop of pastry dough onto my baking pan and then place my parchment paper, ensuring stability of that paper, like so. And now I'm just going to pipe, yet again, our shoe pastry, like so. Once I've completed this task, it's time to bake our shells. We're almost there. Perfect. Okay. They baked off at 400 degrees for 20 minutes. You can see how golden brown and light and airy they are. I will transfer them to a nice wire rack, allow them to cool. The kitchen smells heavenly. And we're almost there and ready to take on the final step in making our Zapla. A view with the wooden spoon inside the oven door. Final stage. Here we are. Our pastry shells have cooled. We have our pastry cream out of the refrigerator. Two teaspoons of maraschino cherries, some nice powdered sugar, a good serrated knife. We will cut each pastry shell in half. Okay, it's time to fill our Zaplas. I'm going to use about two teaspoons of the pastry cream, which I have let sit 24 hours in the refrigerator covered. I'm just going to add our two teaspoons and then always a dollop of pastry cream right on top of the Zapla so that the cherry sticks nicely. And there we are with the cherry on top. Perfect. The only thing needed now is a dollop of powdered sugar to make it that classic, elegant, 
Italian specialty dessert served on San Giuseppe, also known as March 19th, the Zepla. And there we are. I'll continue to do this until we are finito. Enjoy the sounds and watch me take a bite of that Zepla. The recipe will be scrolling as well in the description box below. If you have any questions or comments, please feel free. Thanks for watching. You too can do this, and you can do it with the family as well. Now, the shelf life for our Zepla is about three to five days, covered and refrigerated because we do have the fresh cream. So be mindful of that. Time I wanted to say many, many thanks for watching today's cooking show. If you haven't subscribed to A Chef Called Rhonda, please, would you consider subscribing to A Chef Called Rhonda? It's always healthy, always delicious, and always fun. Until we meet again, arrivederci. Manja. Happy St. Joseph's Day. Bye! Well, that was an easy recipe to make. Although you do need to set some time aside if you're going to embark on the Zepla. It will take a little dedication, a little time, and a little patience. But trust me, step by step, the recipe is super easy and super fun to make.